Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about how the MCU has literally ruined the Hulk and Bruce Banner with good old fashioned Disney Marvel baby humor. Why, yes. I've been wanting to make this video for a very long time because it's been bugging the crap out of me. Like at first, I was with everybody else laughing at like Avengers Infinity War with the whole Mark Ruffalo, um, Bruce Banner thing until one YouTuber said they really ruined Bruce Banner and the Hulk. And with that one comment, I stopped and I thought, hmm, Rat in the Rock, Infinity War, Age of Ultron, and now She-Hulk that's come out. And I'm just, oh, in game too. And I'm just kind of like, you know what? That's so low down. <laughs> so here's the thing. Growing up as a kid, I was never a fan of the Hulk. I really didn't even know who it was until the Fantastic Four and the Iron Man cartoon series came out in the 90s. And they both featured the Hulk, voiced by two different actors. And their portrayals were completely different. The one in Fantastic Four was a little bit better. The one in Iron Man was just kind of bleh. And it's just kind of like, you know... And so I wasn't really that fond, but the one in Fantastic Four was at least a little bit better. Then Hulk got his own solo cartoon series. I never really watched it except for the Iron Man crossover. He had a show like in the 70s, but I wasn't even born yet. I have seen the intro to the 70s one, and I love it. That intro is awesome. Um, but I never watched an actual episode only because, you know, it's old and... Like, the special effects are kind of lame, and the way the Hulk does things in slow motion, because they can't do too much cool stuff, it's kind of weird and stuff, you know? So, I just was never really a Hulk fan growing up. But then, something interesting happened. I started to become a fan with the animated movies. Ultimate Avengers, Hulk vs. Wolverine, Hulk vs. Thor. And then I became hooked. I'm like, oh wow, this dude's pretty freaking awesome. And then Planet Hulk came out. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm totally digging the Hulk. And then, you know, at some point he came to the MCU. Now, I wanted to make this after I saw the Incredible Hulk movie, but I still haven't watched it. So I can't talk about that. But I can't talk about the clips that I've seen on YouTube with the Hulk movie and the Incredible Hulk movie. And well, when it came to the um, the first Hulk movie, the only clip I saw was the old dude talking to the Hulk and the Hulk looked sad. I'm just like, why is Whistler talking to Hulk? Oh no, wait, that's not Whistler. He's just um, the actor, but he just looks the way he did in the Blade movies. And that movie did not do too well. Then the Incredible Hulk. I only saw like the fight scenes and stuff and there's one fight scene that's a little jarring because the CGI is terrible. And so now we get to like the MCU Hulk. But before we do that, let's get into the actual Hulk himself in comics and stuff, right? So, the Hulk. What makes the Hulk so great that so many people love? I don't understand why people love them, but now I do. See, the Hulk and Bruce Banner are two separate entities caused by um, an accident. Sometimes it's an explosion out in like the desert. Sometimes it's in that little machine with gamma rays. But anyway, it's gamma rays. And the thing about the Hulk is that the Hulk is a misunderstood monster. See, the Hulk is this dumbfounded like baby think of a baby that is mentally in up in the head and full of anger and rage the stronger the hulk gets the more devastating it can get and the hulk is literally a raging machine that wants to destroy everything in path and literally kill everything in path however the hulk does not kill and there's a reason for that it is the yin versus the yang it is his bruce banner counterpart see the subconscious of bruce banner the human side kind of bleeds into the hulk's mind 
um, with compassion, love, empathy and stuff. He's not quite sure what all this stuff means, but he gets an inkling of it. The Hulk needs Bruce Banner. The Hulk needs Bruce Banner to be human. And Bruce Banner needs the Hulk when something terrible happens and he needs that monster side to come out and be a hero. They literally can't live without the other person because if Bruce Banner gets separated from the Hulk, the Hulk is going to go on a killing machine spree and stuff. And he needs that. However, Bruce Banner is literally cursed. He has no normal life. If he gets just a little angry, he turns into a monster. And the thing is, his love life is ruined. He has no kids. He um, is feared throughout society. Some people feel sorry for him, but other people literally fear him and stuff. He's constantly being hunted down and people want to experiment on him. People want to kill him. He is literally the most wanted man in the uh, Marvel Universe and stuff. And because of that, he hates the Hulk and wants the Hulk to die. He has done everything in his scientific power to get rid of the Hulk. But the Hulk will not leave him. The Hulk likes to live. And not only that, but the Hulk has no friends of his own. The Avengers um they're both bruce banner and um um like you know friends and stuff but you know when you think about it, the hulk was never really in the avengers for too long in the comics anyway so he's mostly like all these hero like the, all the heroes in the marvel universe are mostly just bruce banner's like friend and stuff hulk has no love interest of his own bruce banner has betty um was it, was it betty brant no wait Thunderball Ross, Betty Ross, that's it. Um, he has Betty, and of course, because she loves him, no matter who he is, she loves the Hulk too. And the Hulk feels that. He probably doesn't understand why he loves Betty, but he does. But of course, when he gets the Planet Hulk, he gets his own woman to smush, so, you know. And it's hard because her father hates Bruce Banner and the Hulk and everything. And, and I think he has a guy, a friend named Ricky and stuff like that, but that's about it. And so, you know, eventually people do learn to respect the Hulk and have some friends, depending on which comics you read and stuff, but it's mostly Bruce Banner's friends and stuff. And, you know, so it's like he's this cursed hero. He has all the strength and the power in the world, but... It comes with the price. It comes with him losing his humanity and stuff. He is a tragic figure. In the MCU, he started off like that. But now he is literally a bad joke. <laughs> now, in the comics, he was never really an Avenger for too long when he first started out. Mainly because he is the Hulk. He just wants to smash stuff. And he's uncontrollable. So at some point in time, he just leaves and does his own thing. Then at some point in time, the Illuminati decides to form and they decide they need to do something about the Hulk because he's getting too dangerous all of a sudden. And I think he even kills like a dog or something like that. So they fear he might go after humanity. When Hulk finds this out, he talks to somebody. I think it's Banshee's daughter. And he wants to know, is this true? Are they going to get rid of him? She says it is. He goes to Professor X, talks to him about it, and it's confirmed. So I, I believe he goes on a rampage and the heroes have to kind of like stop him until the Illuminati sends him off into space. There he crash lands on the planet Sakaar. He becomes a slave. Their technology causes him to form sentences for the first time. And... Because before, he can't really form too many coherent sentences. He can, like, growl. He can. He sounds like a mentally in that person who has a hard time um, getting his words out. And so now he can, like, say sentences and stuff, but that's a problem. He is now stuck on that planet. He is a slave. He is now a gladiator. And he doesn't want none of that. He wants nothing to do with none of those people. He just wants to be left alone. And he can't. So at some point in time... 
the freedom fighter gladiators and stuff he decides to help them out because in order for him to get himself out he has to get them out too so a huge battle happens and now he's fighting on the side of helping people again and he helps freeze the gladiators which of course help freeze the slaves and so then he defeats the, the red king he decides to smush the um red king's right hand gal and so then he i think he becomes the ruler of that planet and stuff and now he is finally at peace he's no longer hunted he's revered now as like a savior and he has a bunch of kids i think two probably or something like that and i believe he comes back to earth in world war hulk where he rages war with his newfound alien friends on the people that sent him into space to begin with so now he's fighting like all the heroes on earth i believe that is one of the best freaking comic books and animated movie adaptions ever of the hulk and sadly we got robbed in thor ragnarok see here's the thing i've been saying for so many long 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 time universal has the rights to the hulk they will not hand them over so it's kind of like the spider-man thing they're only allowed uh marvel's only allowed the uh, mcu is only allowed like to borrow him and stuff and so because of that he will never ever have his own solo movie never and i bet you anything the talks went like this i bet you anything kevin feige went over to like universal like hey Give us the rights back so I can make some money off them. <laughs> they all like, you are making money off them. Only like a certain percentage. Well, I want the full rights. Well, you ain't going to get the full rights. Well, Kevin Feige is probably all like, well, you know what? Oh, I'll get you for this. I'll make the um, Hulk into like the worst joke ever made. And then, of course, in Infinity, um, no, um, Avengers Infinity War, he's all like, you know, I took the hee hee, I took the ha ha, and I became Professor Hulk and everything. And literally, the dude is a bad freaking joke and everything. He has not been this emotional driven monstrous person probably since age of ultron and that's really embarrassing but even in the first avengers he was never perfect and stuff and i will get into thor rat and a rock a little bit later let's first get into the first avengers movie before i ever saw it people kept talking about it and talking about how like you know Edward norton is in combat but mark ruffalo is going to take over and people kept talking about how mark ruffalo was like one of the best things of the movie he's better than the other two hulks and everything they kept saying how the cgi looks better on the hulk in this and everything so you know when i finally watched it I got to see the Hulk for the first time in live action. And, you know, he started off as this calm, meek type person um, trying to control his anger and everything. And he didn't like being lied to and stuff. And so his anger side started to come out a little bit. Mark Ruffalo was act, um, acting at that time, you know. And then so, you know. He's on the helicarrier. He's doing some scientific stuff. And then him and Tony are talking. And Tony is literally trying to make the beast come out. Because Tony acts so stupid sometimes. And so, at some point in time, Loki gets captured. And we find out why Loki got on, like, the ship. He wanted to let the Hulk out. But here's the thing. Have you ever wondered how Loki even even knew Bruce Banner was on the helicarrier or even knew that S.H.I.E.L.D. was going to recruit the Hulk? Like, you ever thought about that? Like, how did he know? Because Clint was already brainwashed and he knew nothing about it. The doctor from Thor, the scientist dude, he knew nothing about it. So how did he know exactly? Because I doubt Fury's going to go start telling all his soldiers and stuff. And some of his soldiers did get captured, but I doubt he told them and stuff. So this was just plot armor. So anyways, the helicarrier gets attacked. Bruce is starting to transform now into the Hulk. And the only person in there is Natasha. And so when he turns into the Hulk, I think think she makes the mistake of calling him dr banner i will get you out of this and stuff and of course the hulk hates bruce because bruce literally said he put a gun in his mouth pulled the trigger 
and the Hulk came out to save him and everything because the Hulk didn't want to die. So he hates Bruce with a passion. When he hears his name, he just goes crazy. And when he went crazy, he tried to kill Natasha for some bizarre reason. And it's like, why? The Hulk does not kill. And so this was the first mistake they made. They never explained why he tried to literally murder Natasha. But of course, this sets up the fight between Thor and the Hulk, which is from the comics and in the animated movie. So that was nice to see. And so the Hulk is literally just getting pissed like he's supposed to do. And he doesn't care. So now he's thinking these are like military people trying to stop him. Okay, fine. You know what I'm saying? This is great and stuff. And so then he gets taken out and then he transforms back. And then he shows up at the end of the movie ready for the big fight. And this is where the second problem comes. Freaking Josh Whedon threw in that stupid line that he's proud of, by the way, because I listened to the um, audio commentary. He's proud about this line. It's when the Hulk tells Captain America, I'm always angry and he can just transform at will. That takes away from the Hulk in more ways than I can explain. It takes away from his struggles. It takes away from his emotion. It takes away from his cursed side. It takes what makes him a compelling, sympathetic character. Cause he can literally just transform when he wants to. He's always pissed off, angry. And then of course, you know, he goes around and he like kills all the like, oh, well, yeah, he basically killed all the like alien soldiers, dude. But here's the thing. Why didn't he try to kill none of the Avengers? Because remember when Natasha, he was with Natasha, he tried to kill her. But now all of a sudden he wants to fight on the team. Why exactly? That's never explained why. And one reason why it's never explained because this version of the Hulk at this point in time doesn't talk. He just growls. The only time he talks is when he say puny God, when he gets through whooping on um, Loki and stuff. And, you know, Josh Whedon threw in some funny stuff with him punching Thor off screen and everything because Josh Whedon thinks that's so funny. And yeah, it was funny like the first time. And it was funny when it was brought back in Rat in the Rock because he wasn't really expecting it. And then so after that, the Avengers stop the bad guys and then they all become buddies. And it's kind of like, um, you know, you have a Hulk on your team that literally tried to kill people earlier and the ship almost got wrecked then. So why isn't he being punished or anything like that? But whatever. Then we get into the second movie. This is where things start to go really stupid and wrong for the Hulk. Josh Whedon, once again, he put the Hulk in a stupid love romance with the Scarlet Witch. Why? That never happened in the comics. And just like the whole Tony and Pepper thing, that never happened in the comics. And so like, it was a weird relationship. It was never built up. We didn't see none of that in the Avengers movie. So he literally tried to kill her. So why all of a sudden does he like her and stuff now? Now, one major problem they did in this movie was, okay, they keep the Hulk for emergencies. So when there's something really terrible, they bring him out as a contingency plan. But in the first battle, we see him fighting a bunch of Hydra soldiers and stuff. What was so bad about that? What was so dangerous about that? Well, they need the Hulk help and everything. And so they brought him for the whole Wanda Quicksilver thing, which of course he gets brainwashed. And he fights like Iron Man. Cause of course we need to see the same thing that happened in the first movie, just with a different hero from the comics and stuff. And I liked it. I liked the fight between the Hulk and the Hulk Buster and stuff like that. But here's the problem. The Hulk was around all these civilians. And he then tried to lead these civilians. Now, the Hulk in the comics and cartoons and stuff, if he's around like a lot of people in public, he will literally jump away and get the safety and fight whoever he has to fight far away. This Hulk doesn't do that because this Hulk is literally stupid and doesn't really talk and stuff. And so he fights Iron Man around all these people. They nearly die and all this other stuff. And then the most insulting thing ever is that Iron Man is literally able to knock, I forget how this happens. 
but the battle happens offline. I remember seeing Iron Man punch the Hulk and then it cuts from that to the aftermath and everybody's looking sad. And it's kind of like the Hulk is literally the strongest person there is. Only a god can match his strength in the first movie, but yet Iron Man and his tech was able to knock out the Hulk and all this other crap. So literally Iron Man is more powerful than the Hulk. That makes no literal sense whatsoever. And so this is when the dumbed down, like making to a bad joke thing started to happen. He started becoming less and less of a character. Then him and Black Widow had some kind of emotional talk. They bring him out for the last battle, but then the Hulk decides, you know what? I just need to leave and everything. I can't be with Natasha, that dumb relationship that Josh Whedon created. And you know, I'm just going to leave. So he gets into the Quinjet and he flies off. But here's the problem. One, how is he even, I, oh, I can't talk. How is he even able to fit in the, um, the pilot seat and everything? And two, we find out in the third Thor movie that Bruce Banner is up in space. Somehow the Quinjet, which does not have space capability, by the way, is able to fly into space and lady, literally fall on um, clap. I can't even talk tonight. Crash land into Sakaar and everything. How? <laughs> How? The Quinjet doesn't even have that capability to go into space. It doesn't have warp drive. It doesn't have a machine that can make a wormhole and go to like another sector of space. And that's because Tiger with TT doesn't care about explaining nothing because he is a giant man child. And now we get into Thor Ratnarok. They took one of the best Hulk comic book storylines that I just explained to you a whole lot earlier and he muffled it up. Not only did he muffle that up, but he muffled the Hulk supporting cast. And not only did he did that, but my God, the Hulk is a idiot in this movie. First things first, the Hulk is a gladiator, just like in Planet Hulk. And, but here's the thing, the Hulk loves being a gladiator. Why? Because the people cheer him on. And I'm stopping and I'm thinking, um, dude, you're a slave. So you like being a slave is basically what you're saying. And he's not trying to free the other gladiator. Like he's just having a good old time. So he's there for everybody's amusement. In his downtime, he likes to flirt and wrestle with Valkyrie because that's his new love interest and stuff. Because this Hulk does not transform into Bruce Banner no more or de transform. Also, somehow he got a haircut and it's like, when? <laughs> and so like now all of a sudden the Hulk can form sentences and talk just like in the comic, but it's not through alien technology. Now, when he speaks, he speaks like that of a mentally inept child. He can't form sentences that well. Okay, that's similar to how the comics and stuff are, but it's like, it's played for laughs and everything. And not only that played for laughs, but we get to see the Hulk big old booty. Why? Because Tiger Ratiti is a man child. And Tiger Ratiti loves to show um, naked superheroes on screen. He did it in Thor Love and Thunder. And so him and Thor, they fight a little bit because... Hulk is literally acting like an idiot. I, I think there's even a scene where he picks up a ball and starts playing with it. But he's acting like a giant child. This is Tiger with TD coming out. But oh no, let's get into that supporting cast. Korg is an idiot. Plain and simple. There's no other way to put it around there. Korg is literally Tiger with TD coming out in the movie, but in full force and everything. And... Korg is not like that in the comic book or animated movie. Korg is a violent warrior. He is noble. He is a gladiator slave. 
Him and his people crash landed on that planet. He thought he was the only survivor. When the Hulk shows up and they all have to team up to fight the new gladiators and stuff, it turns out to be his people. These are his brothers in arms. He tries to talk to them to get them out of, um, not to fight them, but it's literally they have to fight to the death. That's what the whole gladiator thing is about. So he had to literally kill his brothers and stuff. It's tragic. He hates it. And he becomes more of an enraged person wanting revenge and helps fight for the resistance. We don't see none of this in the MCU. None. Because it's Disney baby humor. Don't even get me started on Meek. Meek is like a coward, but a brave one at that in the comics. And the MCU, he, I think he's just like a baby. and He's just there. And he's just stupid. And I'm like, my God, it's literally like somebody over at the MCU. I don't know if it's um, Kevin Feige or what, but they're all like, let's just make the Hulk into like the biggest idiot we can make him into because we can't take him seriously. And they have never taken the Hulk seriously. Then at some point he detransforms back into Bruce Banner. Bruce is shocked that he's been there for a couple of years. And this is understandable and I'm okay with this. I'm okay with him freaking out and being hilarious and stuff. Cause he is literally having a freak out meltdown. I'm okay with that. Then towards the end of the movie, they need him to hulk up again. Why? Because one of Thor's monsters in the comics um, needs to be fought. Now here's the interesting thing about Thor and his monsters. Have you ever noticed that in all four movies, he has this big monster thing from the comics. That's a big deal. But in the MCU, it literally gets defeated within a couple of seconds. Like, have you noticed that? Like, have you noticed that? Anyways, so he has to fight this giant wolf looking thing and Sotor and everything. And that's the really, the way he transforms is really stupid. He falls out the plane, hits the, the ground like a, a little toy, and it's supposed to be funny. And then he hulks up, and then he defeats the monster. And he literally tells, what's his face? If I transform, I won't be able to turn back human again. So it's a sacrifice, but whatever. He has some type of hero moment. But he's literally there just to like do something, because they had to set him up for the next movie. Avengers Infinity War. Now, he is the Hulk. Once again, in the uh, um, Avengers Infinity um, Saga, he allowed all the Asgardians to get slaughtered, except for like a couple of like 50 or 100. I'm just like, what kind of hero is that? He's a hero for crying out loud. I guess. I don't really know if they really make him a hero in the MCU anymore. But it's like... He allowed them to get slaughtered. Then he fought Thanos, got his butt whooped. And Thanos didn't even have any of the Affinity Stones. I'm not even sure if he had the gauntlet. And he just got his butt whooped. No, he did have the gauntlet, but he ain't had none of the stones. And it's like, dude, what in the living crap is this? And they literally had to do that just so he can take the Silver Surfer's place, go back on the planet Earth, and warn everybody. And so that the Hulk won't be able to defeat Thanos. After this, Bruce Banner literally becomes a joke. He becomes comedic relief. He is the butt of pretty much every joke. And the Hulk doesn't want to come out to play no more. Because the Hulk got smacked around so badly that he's scared and embarrassed and he doesn't want to come out. One of the strongest Avengers there is, one of the toughest people in all of Marvel, and he's scared like a little baby. Seriously. Does Kevin Feige just hate Universal that much? That he pissed all over this character. So after this, Mark Ruffalo's acting just becomes silly, comedic, and goofy and stuff. And it's really embarrassing. Now he's funny, but it's embarrassing to the character. It's insulting to the character. He doesn't even act smart that much no more. 
And so he has to be in the Hulkbuster suit. He trips, he falls, he gets his butt whooped in that. And it's just a little living joke. The Hulk is seeing all these people get defeated. Thanos is about to kill half the universe and the Hulk doesn't want to come out and whoop nobody's butt. This is embarrassing. But the most embarrassing thing comes in the next movie entry. Off screen, Bruce Banner has been working on combining the Hulk and himself to create what fans have dubbed Professor Hulk from the comics. But if you go to Wikipedia on She-Hulk on the TV show, he's called Smart Hulk. Smart Hulk. Yes, that's right. The king called him Professor Hulk. So now he put the brains and the brawn together. And now he just looks like an idiot. And he looks smaller than what he used to be. And everything he says is a little joke. And then when he sees him past self, when he goes back in time and see his past self acting like an idiot, he's embarrassed by it, which is natural because he doesn't like the Hulk. But it's but the words like they're making fun of the dude, you know what I'm saying? Because they don't want to take that version seriously. It's sad that Josh Whedon came out with a more believable Hulk and Bruce Banner than everybody else, and especially the Russo brothers. I'm embarrassed for them, and so then you know. What does he do? Oh, he has his one moment. He puts on the Infinity Gauntlet. He snaps. And he's like, oh, he almost killed me. And it messes up his arm. So he's in a slink for the rest of the movie. But then the big battle comes. He has his one combo moment where he holds up the ground and saves everybody. But did you notice something? At the end of the battle, we see him charging. But I don't never remember seeing him fight nobody. So what the world was he doing? Literally, what was he doing? I don't even remember that. I can remember what Thor did. I can remember what Iron Man did. I remember what Spider-Man, Black Panther, and Captain America, Wanda, and Captain Marvel did. But I don't remember what he did. I don't even remember what Doctor Strange did either. I think he was out filming something else, so he really couldn't do nothing. Uh, he had to do like uh, his stunt double, had to do some stuff for him. But where the world was the Hulk at? And now we get to our next entry, She-Hulk, which I cannot watch because I got rid of my Disney Plus. I got tired of it. <laughs> but I watched the trailers, and my God, he's just silly. He's silly. He's doing yoga. He is being silly. <laughs> He's just being silly. <laughs> like, I can't believe this and everything. And uh, I, 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 I can't even talk. Like, I really can't even talk and everything. I can't believe how one of the coolest people went into one of the crappiest people in just a matter of 10 years and stuff, or less than 10 years. Um, what was it, like eight years probably. This is baffling. And they did not do this with no other superhero in the MCU, but only him. Only him. And I don't, under, it has to be because of that deal with Universal. It has to be. Because you know Kevin Feige gets pissed and stuff. Like he doesn't like um, the dude who made like the Inhumans TV show. I forget his name, not Jeff Johns, but the other one. And um, yeah, it's just like that man can hold some grudges. And I bet you anything it is him and everything. Because why would it be Universal for like, why? It has to be Kevin Feige and stuff. And it's just a crying shame that the Hulk went from one of the strongest, coolest, most complex characters ever to a living joke, a bad meme. It's insulting. It really is. And I wish I never watched those animated movies because that's when I became a fan of his. Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.